Hi, welcome to CS642 Computer Security. Today we'll be talking about the Border Gateway Protocol, or BGP, and the security implications. Let's start off with internet addressing and how routing tables are built. These are tables that control where packets are sent. The internet is organized using what's called classless interdomain routing, or CIDR, and this is a format of specifying an address and then saying how many bits in the address are used to specify the network and how many bits in the address specify hosts within the network. So an address is given in CIDR as a dotted quad, a dot b dot c dot d, followed by a number x, which indicates how many bits uh, identify the address itself, everything identify the network itself, everything other than the network refer to the host. So if you have a uh, slash 24, such as 192.1.68.0.0 um, slash 24, this means that 24 bits of that, 192.168.0, refer to the network, and 8 bits of it, the final 8 bits, refer to the host. This allows you to have 256 different hosts. Um, so this means that if you are an organization that manages some set of addresses identified by a CIDR address, then you manage all the addresses that are prefixed by that many bits of the address that you give. So routing then works by deciding for some set of addresses, some CIDR prefix, where should those packets be sent. This is classless because we don't specify exactly how many bits we have to use. It's not exactly 8 bits or 16 bits or 24 bits. It could be 1 bit, 2 bit, 19 bits, 18 bits. So routing works by deciding for every CIDR block of addresses where they should be sent. The internet is organized as a set of autonomous systems. These are sort of large networks run by organizations that then connect together. So there is a network pro protocol within an organization that might be RIP or OSPF. And, uh, within an AS. Now this is all managed by a single organization, so they have complete knowledge of the topology and the routers and where they connect and all the addresses that they're allowed to use. But then between autonomous systems, this is between different companies that may not trust each other or like each other, um, and they might want to use, they might have various reasons for routing different directions. So here they use the border gateway protocol, and the idea of this protocol is to sort of learn where you can send addresses, where the packets, where you can send packets. The packets are actually sent according to, to Preferences, for example, you might have a business relationship that says that AT&T should send packets through Charter, or it might decide it doesn't like Charter and wants to send packets through WISC.edu in this example. So the key thing here is that within an, within an autonomous system, we use one protocol, something like RIP or OSPF. Between autonomous systems, this is sort of the internet as a whole, we use BGP, the Border Gateway Protocol. There's several different categories of autonomous systems. One is a stub. This is a... a AS that is connected only to, to one other AS. Uh, so, for example, Wisconsin.edu might be an autonomous system that is only connected to one other network. A multi-homed AS might be connected to other autonomous, multiple other autonomous systems, such as uh, AS4 and 5 in this case. And then transit ASs are ones that packets pass through to get from one place to another. So here, 7 um, and 2, for example, are transit because traffic from 8 has to go through AS7 and 2 to get to AS3. So here is sort of a picture. You can have multiple connections um, that sort of show how this all connects. So as I mentioned before, BGP is policy-based routing. So the autonomous system can set the policy on how to route, but it has to know who can actually deliver the packets. So BGP routers will set up TCP connections between different autonomous systems that transmit information where they sort of say, these are the machines I connect to. And it uses an iterative announcement of routes so, routes so that each AS will sort of announce, these are the hosts that I, this is the host that I connect to, and then it will say, these are the other ASs I connect to and what addresses they can connect to. So here's an example of BGP with the various transit ASs, stub ASs, and multi-homed ASs. Um, so we'll start off with seven announcing, I can handle traffic bound for autonomous system seven, two, eight, and two. 8 and 2 will now for, 2 forwards this now to 1, 3, and 7, saying that I can handle traffic for 2 and 7. Um, 3 will then tell 4 it can handle traffic for 3, 2, and 7, and 6 tells 5 it can handle 6, 2, and 7. 5 can now announce to 4 and 6 I can handle traffic for 5. This gets propagated backwards, so 6 will tell 2, and this sort of whole set of routes are sort of completely flooded. Um, so this works well in practice, so the thing to know here is that 8 sort of learns um, that 7 can handle traffic for 7, 2, 6, and 5, 
Um, five learns that six can handle traffic for six, two, and seven. Four learns that three can handle traffic for three, two, and seven. Now this isn't complete because we haven't done everything, but you can see how by sort of recursively or iteratively sending this data around, you can see that each autonomous system learns which traffic the other autonomous systems can handle. One thing to note is that when you're announcing routes of like which site or addresses you handle, routers tend to prefer a more specific route. So if you say I can handle the addresses 128.64.45.0 slash 24, this means that you're only handling the final eight hosts there. And there's another router that says it can handle autonomous system that can handle 128.64.0.0 slash 16, meaning that it sort of handles all 65,000 hosts. A router will tend to have want a more specific route feeling that it's going to be slightly faster to send the data directly. So what are the things that can go, what are the things that can go wrong? So one thing we can do is IP hijacking. So the, this is the same IP TCP hijacking we talked about before. BGP classically is not authenticated. So anybody can sort of send any false route if you can hijack something. And then because BGP spreads information around, that false route will be propagated all over the place. So for example, an autonomous system might learn uh, that there's some prefix of another autonomous system it thinks it's connected to, that it announces it can take traffic to, that it shouldn't really. It might announce it as a shorter path to a prefix, so it might say that you can get to the prefix on one hop through me instead of five hops in the right direction. It might announce a more specific prefix, and we noted before that routing tends to prefer the more specific prefix. So this happens in practice. So for example, in 1997, the AS7007 incident happened, which is when a Florida exchange that had very specific routes, slash 24 routes for most of the internet, which meant that most routers in it said, oh, this Florida exchange is a great place to send all my traffic. And so a huge amount of traffic on the internet was sent to this Florida exchange that sort of dropped it on the floor. And so the internet kind of went down there. In 2010, China Telecom um, announced routes for large chunks of the internet, which meant that a lot of traffic was sort of sent out of the United States and Europe and elsewhere in the world to go through China to then come back again. And this meant that all this traffic was traversing routers in China and could be viewed um, in China if that was needed. Uh, so this means what this does is if you do this, it causes all the traffic to flow through the announced autonomous system that has the short or more specific route. Similarly, in um, Pakistan in 2010, wanted to block YouTube. They didn't like some of the videos on YouTube. And the way they attempted to do this was not to sort of block or filter the traffic that was sent to YouTube, but instead they announced that they owned the path to YouTube. So, um, YouTube itself, uh, Google announced the address block 208.65.132.0 slash 22, which means there were 10 bits uh, in the host there. Um, YouTube.com was a specific address. So Pakistan's, I, an ISP in Pakistan has announced a more general, a more specific address, 208.65.153.0 slash 24. Because it's more specific, the whole internet decided to send all traffic for YouTube to this Pakistan ISP. And so the whole internet thinks that YouTube.com is in Pakistan, and this took YouTube down for about two hours. Um, ultimately, what YouTube did was announce a slash six prefix um, and have to get that propagated. So YouTube was able to have a more specific address that caused the, real, the traffic to head back in the right direction. So the real problem here is that there's no authentication of who is actually allowed to announce a route. You can sort of make up anything you want. So the solution to this um, is called BGPSEC. And basically what it means is that route announcements have to be cryptographically signed. So you have to sort of sign that you're authoritative for something and you can look up in a sort of a global table which autonomous systems own which blocks of addresses. Uh, so this means an AS can only advertise for itself and it can't advertise any IP prefixes it doesn't own. And when it advertises routes, for example, when 7 says you can send traffic to 2, 6, and 5 through me, it has to have signed messages from 2, 6, and 5 saying, yes, I can do this. Um, and furthermore, two has to say, and I own the addresses for two. So we are basically using digital signatures, using public key or asymmetric key encryption to sign all these messages so that a router can verify when it gets a route announcement that everything in there is actually authorized. Um, this does, however, require public key infrastructure because we have to have these certificates. They have to be signed by a certificate authority so we know we trust them. Um, and this means that it's slow to roll out we sort of need to have a lot big parts of the internet agree to do this, not everybody, but we still need a lot of agreement to actually make this happen. So this caps up our, our section on internet security. 
Um, the recurring themes are that many protocols were built without any authenticity mechanism in mind, such as IP, TCP, DNS, BGP. Um, we find that functionality mechanisms, such as sequence numbers or offset numbers, um, become implicit security number that people start assuming these things are not guessable. Port numbers, IP IDs, uh, and then assume that packets can't be spoofed because these numbers are hard to guess. When it turns out they can be guessed, everything breaks. Um, and so people have started to build backward compatible security mechanisms. So for example, for IP, there's something called IPsec which adds encryption and message authentication codes. For DNS, we talked about DNSSEC. For BGP, there's BGPSEC. 